Hey, everybody, welcome to Pop Dust Presents. I'm Jordan Edwards, and today we've got Shade. You guys are back making new music from scratch. Um, you're very cute, like bundled into the, into the webcam frame right now. Uh, <laughs> love it. So um, what, what prompted the return? I mean, it's not like it's been years and years, but it's been a little bit of a gap. You had a few singles here and there. You did that song with Cat Cunning. You did the cover, the Nirvana cover. You've done some things since your last album. So what got the juices flowing to kind of get this new wave of music going? Well, a lot has happened since then. Chelsea and I had a, have a daughter now. Uh, mm -hmm. she's, she just turned two. Her name is June. Um, Max, I, I got a dog, uh, <laughs> and I've been seeing someone for almost three years now. So that's kind of new for me having a long first long-term partner, which has been changes in life. A lot of life changes going on. A lot of life changes. A lot of life changes. And I think we've been working on this, you know, we were working on this new batch of music for a couple of years now, and we've just been working hard behind the scenes here. Um, are you do you continuously write? Are you one of those bands, one of the people that's like you have kind of you know waves where you write and then waves where you just don't make music or make notes app things or anything like that? I think we'd like to write every day and just write all the time, but you know, we once we felt like we had this batch of of music, you know, getting close to the finish line, we were, we're working with a new record label and they really wanted to um, kind of have everything kind of turned in months in advance so that we could print vinyl and have like a whole, you know, game plan, which which was actually really great for us to kind of have like such a long runway to, to our record. So we actually, you know, the album is fully finished right now, which is, which is really great. We've been seeing, you know, vinyl proofing things and, and all that. So I think that for us, um, we, we love to write. And I think that obviously, you know, um, we try to write as much as we can. And then we have spurts where we're just working on live show stuff for, you know, like getting content stuff. So I think, you know, I think we try to juggle everything, but um, we just submitted the album. So we're continuing to write, but still kind of um, trying to figure out the new live show and what that will look like and stuff like that. Now I have to ask the, the single, um, we didn't even mention the title. Everybody knows I'm high. Is this a symbolic high or an actual literal physical high you're talking about? Well, I think for some of us, maybe it's symbolic others, maybe a little more literal, um, symbolic, <laughs> literal. <right here. laughs> Love uh, it. Claire's day, Claire's day right there. Yeah. Um, and of course you've got this wild ass music video psychedelic very like looks like you filmed it in la like yeah. in the canyons and stuff mm -hmm. so first of all whose idea was the the basic concept of it and how did you work with the director to kind of like make it that this guy zach tavel super creative hilarious guy he when we were getting like music video treatments so we were we went out to a few directors our, our label did and he, you know, these other, some other directors sent back like one idea, he sent back 10. And uh, so he had 10 different crazy ideas. One was like, you know, we like, a, a, like a, a giant like goth dance party. There was one where he's like, we'll get the red hot chili peppers to be just in the video and, they, and it'll just be them the whole time. And but he, he had like he had 10 different crazy ideas. And we I still want to see that. I want to see yeah, that. You know, so it was like, we <laughs> narrowed it down to three. And then we got on a call with him. We're like, hey, would it be crazy if we combined like three of our favorite ideas and he was like, let's go for it. So like, yeah, we shot yeah. that whole video in two and a half days. And like, it was, it was, you know, you know, started out at a, at a, a pool party in a mansion in, in the Hills of LA. And then next thing we know, we're like sprinting through the, the downtown streets of Los Angeles. So like, it was, it was crazy. It was a lot of fun. I mean, a, lot of fun, a yeah. little, a little side note that's kind of funny is I actually, I never, I've, I haven't had this since I was a kid, but I got pink eye on the way to the shoot. Like literally the first day of shooting, my eyes were both like sealed, like red. 
and like seal. It was disgusting. Like, if there's any song that, that but, it yeah. would work for, at least it was everybody knows I'm high. Yeah, it was funny. Like yeah, was, yeah, was, yeah. My eyes are like blind. so. So there, there's there's the 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 scene where, you know, you guys are kind of like staring at the camera. Yeah. Sort of an offset. So was was that during the pink eye thing? Because you oh, kind of. Like, the oh, whole, the pink eye was was all day every day. It was day. unavoidable. Um, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, the the last day it was like not too bad, but it was pretty funny. It was everyone was like, "Hey, Lisa was poor. Everybody knows I'm high." But yeah, was, I really hope that when YouTube does like the auto sections, like at the bottom of the screen, and they section off, that there's like a pink eye discussion section, <laughs> like it makes like the AI picks up. Yeah. Um. So the last thing I'll ask about the video, and because I'm I'm a video director, so I'm interested. In these the big the big heads, like the paper mache heads, when you're on the cliff face, um, who made those? Whose idea was that? And how did it turn out compared to what you thought it was going to be? So Zach works for this company called Easy Pete's, and they have you know um, various like art directors in there, and and costume design and stuff like that. And I think uh, it was a collaborative effort by yeah. a couple of different people. Yeah. And then, but, and they turned out exactly as we pictured them. Yeah, they were so cool. They were so cool. They weren't uh, necessarily practical to actually put on your head. I think that the people that had them on their heads, it was maybe a little bit more difficult no. for them yeah. to dance. And, and there was one, there was like, you know, they just kind of got three of their homies who lived out there to kind of show up. And they were like roughly the same height as us. And so this one guy, this poor guy, he like could not dance at all. He he got it great, but we felt he would he like admitted, right? He's like, guys, I am not a dancer. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like he couldn't dance because of the because of the restrictions. Well, also he just wasn't he, 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 he out of these. He was a good either. dancer, but he got it, it, it was impossible. He, and the what we were dancing on was like a sloped little cliff thing so it was the ground was very uneven and it was just really straight up we were shoving sweatshirts into the heads just to stabilize <laughs> yeah. the people's heads like they were all of them were troopers because yeah they were like yeah the suffocating head, yeah. <laughs> they were suffocating in there yeah, it, was, it, was, it was crazy they were they were such troopers for that now you mentioned the new album coming out um is the single indicative of the rest of the album or is it kind of an outlier in terms of style I think it's, I think it fits in the vein of the record. Um, I do think it's maybe a little bit more um, left of center than some of the other stuff. I think. Um, but, I wouldn't say outlier, but yeah, I, I think like there's just an eclectic mix of of everything on this album. Mm -hmm. Then we're so excited and just um, it's just kind of like the past two years bundled into this album that we're super super proud of. So I think that. Every song is a bit unique and, you know, in its own way. So I wouldn't say outlier. I think it fits in there. Yeah. Yeah. And you've kind of moved away. I don't know. Moved away is, is the wrong term, but you've evolved. You've kind of like shifted your sound. You know, I think you were initially known for this sort of ethereal pop sort of, you know, weird kind of sound like and now this feels more like organic more rock like you could you it sounds like you could go up i don't know what your live show is, is going to look like now but it feels like you could almost go up with just like a straight you know guitar bass and drums mm -hmm. and it's keyboards really kind of really band with this. Bass as we speak so we're trying to teach her how to play bass i am trying to learn how to play bass it is very difficult but we're working on it because they yeah. they really want me to play bass on stage so that and you want to play bass and i do want to play sounds bass like we're like too. forcing her to do it. <laughs> Uh, um, but we, yeah. but organic, I think is probably the best word to describe kind of where the songs are kind of shifting. Cause not all of them have electric guitars on this record, but it's also, there's a lot more like three part harmony when we met, you know, before we kind of went into like, like that more ethereal kind of sound that was more vocal centric with Chelsea, we were doing a lot more three part harmony and we've, we've brought a lot of that back on this record. And there's a lot of songs that are just like very stripped down with piano and vocals. And so it, it is, it is compared to like high dive and some of the earlier recordings, it's a lot more, um, you know, paired, paired, paired back. And has the songwriting process changed over the years? Um, do you feel, is it more stressful, less stressful? I don't think it's changed. I think maybe our inspiration has evolved a bit just because, you know, we have a daughter and like, we're just have these, you know, our lives are a little bit different and we've got like our own kind of 
home spaces. And so I think it's, I think it's evolved. I think to be honest, it's almost um, been easier to write because, you know, our daughter goes to daycare during the day. And so previously we would just be kind of like writing endlessly and there would be just no, like time was just a strange thing, but now it's, you know, we really have like basically a nine to five where we have to like get stuff done and we have to write and we have to just, I think it's more concentrated now, which is really nice for us. Is can we? Is there like a Blue Ivy style cameo? Like, <laughs> no, like, not yet. Even though she does sing a lot, but yeah, uh, like what? How does the? How, can you even tell this early on? Like, did the musical gene get passed? Thank God. I think it got passed. Mm. Um, she she spent the first fourteen months with us all day, every day, and we were writing music. We were writing this music. Um, so she's been around music you know, since she was born and she definitely sings a lot. She's not tone deaf, which is great. Yeah. Um, she, she has really good rhythm yeah. too. Yeah. She, she got the gene. I think luckily she's, I think she'll be probably on the next record. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty yeah. Confident. yeah. I, I was, I was wondering like people who have musical parents, especially professional musical parents. I wonder if there's like a self-consciousness of like, I have to be musical because my parents, I was thinking about that when like two professional athletes get married mm -hmm. and are their kids, you know, how athletic are they going to be? You know, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 I hear that. No, I think, uh, I think right now it's just cool. Cause like June just loves being or, like, loves to sing, loves being around music. She like loves, you know, she's singing. been very critical about our songs too on this album. We'll, We'll play them for her and she's started to uh be very opinionated about songs in general so we always have to skip things that she doesn't like so oh, yeah. she'll be like i don't like that um if she yeah. skipped a song it wasn't making the album We're yeah like, all right back to the drawing board <laughs> yeah no. there you go there Peace. you go uh so you guys are from you guys from the dc area we've talked about this i still have my 202 number by the way oh. uh, do you still live in the dc area then are you yeah. in okay I do what now? I said, are you in the DC area then? No, no. I'm in LA now. You're but, in LA. Okay, okay. But yeah, I, I was I was in the DC, DC area for several years. I I started out the Gazette. I yeah. started. I I took photos for brightest young things. If you if you remember that. Worse. Oh, it's so funny. Hey. Our um our neighbor across the street uh was one of the people that started brightest young things. Kale. Yeah. Oh, Kale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kale yeah. yeah. was one of our dear friends. Yeah. Okay. Kale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh, I used to go out with um, Dakota and Svetlana was when. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The, the good old days. The yeah. Good old days. yeah. Some thing shows were like really so huge. much we were, fun. They were yeah. huge for us at the time too. It really kind of that was like right when we just we were before even Shade. I think when we kind of started playing out together and going into that electronic kind of world, we, you know, we, those brightest young things shows were a lot of fun and were really yeah. important for us at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And, you know, it helped shed your, your walking sticks past. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember when last time I interviewed you guys and I kind of was like, remember the, your, Chelsea was like walking. No, we don't talk about the walk. It's like, <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> that's hilarious. The that's forbidden funny. walking sticks. No, at this point, you know, it's a part of our journey. So uh, yeah. I think we were a lot. Yeah, more and I guess I, you just more like apprehensive about the name than the music because the music was good. I mean, it wasn't your style. Yeah. Now, but, you know. yeah, I think we were just like it was of the time. It was a, it was a different time, and I think like it was it was perfect for a Unitarian church in Tacoma Park. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you yeah. go. Well, we knew, we knew it was bad when we were getting um we would be getting random emails from people like, hey, I want a shipment of like twenty walking sticks. Can I get it in mahogany? And we're like. We're not yeah, like for my we don't, for we my don't, grandfather and we, we don't sell not. walking sticks. It was crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Do you have any birch? Do you have a birch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I walk with the cane and the yeah. eats. And I'm like, okay, I think no, gotta change it. Gotta change it. I haven't, I haven't, you know, I didn't I didn't even ask before. Was there a specific moment where you switched from like the folk stuff to the pop stuff? Was it literally like we need to switch, or was it like a gradual thing? Mm, it, I mean, one there was a pivotal thing where we we had this drummer, and when he left the band, it was sort of like, are we gonna try to get find somebody else, or are we just gonna keep it as the core and start building like beats on our own? And that that was a huge moment. So I feel like it happened pretty quickly after that, just because like, you know, when you start building electronic music like that, start building beats, 
I think we also, at that same time, like Sylvanesso, their first record had just come out and we were super inspired by that. And uh, I don't know. So I think it, I think it actually happened pretty quick. Um, it wasn't overnight, but it was like, I mean, we, couple, yeah. we played some ridiculous shows when we first started going into the electronic thing. Like we had no idea how to like run cables. So we had just like cables running everywhere. We were using iPhone, like headphones, like oh plugged into like, so, and like, it was just, it was ridiculous. It was, yeah, it was insane. We had no idea what the hell we were doing, but we, um, we figured it out eventually. I think. You made it, you made it through. <laughs> You're like, we just used to play guitars and, <laughs> and, and drum on our guitar case when we needed percussion. I don't know why I gave you Southern accents just now. I don't know why. No, I, I like that. I like that. We had, we, had a, we had a song about tobacco and like that came out like two months, two years before. Like picking tobacco. Yeah. Our, yeah. <laughs> God, this is. Yeah. Our, no matter what happens, you'll always be a Strathmore Artisan Residence alum. <laughs> alumni. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. was, yeah. You'll always have that. That's funny. I can't believe you remember that. Yeah, that, that was a that was quite a um quite a fun time. Um you you mentioned getting, you know, we talked about we just talked about live shows and stuff and um are you guys you guys have done festivals in the past. You guys got some festivals going on this summer. Like we were it's almost March, you know. We're 2 weeks away from daylight savings time, which is exciting. exciting I know, we'll get some more some more late during the day. Um Yeah. Yeah. So we, what's the concert schedule look like? Um, we have we got a, couple. a bunch of one-offs and, um, radio shows and we're kind of planning a little tour around the album release. Um, yeah, yeah. we've got, a, uh, we got some like shows on the East coast that, uh, I, I don't know if we can announce quite yet, I know. but we, we're, cannot, um, but... we just played a pretty awesome festival and, um, we did Austin city limits like a month ago or two. And it was sick. It was like, I think that was the one festival. We, I mean, there's a, a handful that we haven't played before and that was one of them. And it was, that was a great one. Mm -hmm. Um, and we got to try out a lot of the new tunes, which was nice. Get, um, get, get the uh, audience reaction. The, uh, get yeah. the temperature, test the, test the temperature of the room or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Was, yeah, no, it was, it was very valuable to do that. We scrapped everything. We started from scratch after that show. So, <laughs> oh, okay. No, well, we did, I'm we did, we did, we did scratch one song after that show though. We did, we did. Cause we, it was an actual, disaster. it was actually disaster. a disaster. It was, right? it was a horror <laughs> show. It was a horror. Was a we were like, we're going to open with one of the new songs and, and at, like, we have like, 30 minutes to go on stage and the bass guitar just is not working. So we're running around the stage, can't figure it out when it, it finally worked five minutes into the show. And then it was completely, minutes, yeah. it was completely out of tune. Yeah. And so the song like, started out acapella. Basically it was like, it, it was, was a like, disaster. It, it was like a, a queen, the worst queen cover band you'd ever heard. Like, oh my God. Yeah. We're not this was, song. This song, has, this song yeah, has we, to go. We scrapped that. We scrapped, we scrapped it. Okay. Wow. Well, that's some raw, like you, you're getting the real deal from shade. Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. All, all of it. Now. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I think that when you're starting a show, you need to start with a song that people know. I think that, <laughs> I think no, no. I, I like. I'm not. I'm not your. I'm not your tour manager. I'm not your manager. But, but I think like uh, no other way would be a good starter. Yeah. Because it's like a, it's like a secondary hit. You know. It's but it's like recognizable. But it's not your biggest song. So I think that's, a, you mm -hmm. know. I'm I'm just a guy. But you know that just, you know. So we'll keep that in mind next time. I like that. Because... Because... Good openers. Yeah. That would be a good one actually. Because yeah. this was a tragedy. <laughs> We usually do name on it. I don't know if you remember that song, but that that's we've we've run that in as an opener sometimes. But that that like, do you remember that song? That was that was from uh, <laughs> that was from the Walking Sticks era. Okay. Pretty young thing. Yeah. Well, that's that's another question. Are there any Walking Sticks songs that you have or could adapt into the Shade style? That, that's the that's the only one that made it from that's that the era. One, the one Walking made it through. Made, yeah, the made, one made it through. Name on it, but it's always just a, it's very like funky. It's got bass synth and just it, Chelsea. It still slaps. Like people, there's a great moment where Chelsea gets to do a call and response too with the crowd in that song. So like, it's just it's just a tried and true. Yeah. Song. Nice, 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 nice. Now, um, the internet loves little like little games and stuff and and little you know little um, things. So I want to do a a ranking thing with you guys, just like okay, okay. things. And I want you to rank them. Um, so we'll start off with an, kind of an easy one. We'll do candy bars. So you got Snickers, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, Butterfinger, and Kit Kat. How would you rank those? Oh, my gosh. Individually? Okay. Chelsea, you go uh, first. I'll go first. Um, 
So we have Reese's, um, Snickers, Snickers, Snickers. Butterfinger, Butter. and Kit Kat. Yeah. And Kit Kat. All right, so chocolate really isn't my thing, but I would do number one, Snickers, number two, Butterfinger, number three, Reese's, okay. right. number four, Kit Kat is the worst chocolate in the world. Kit wow. Kat. Reese's. Oh, hard. Yeah, wow. Reese's is better than Kit Kat. Oh, yeah. wow. What did you open with Snickers? I opened with Snickers, yeah. yeah. When wow. You know what's wild about Reese's now is there's like 70 different types of Reese's peanut butter cups now. So. <laughs> I, 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 that's I, the, the Super Bowl commercial with like the caramel covered Reese's. I'm like, come on, guys, we can't be doing that. Yeah. I'll go real quick. Um, Butterfingers are dumpster candy. What? They're, they're horrible. Oh, oh, hot take. It's right. disgusting. Butterfingers way down there. I can never see those again. Happy Wait, did you say peanut butter disgusting in general? No, no, no I like peanut butter. Like Butterfinger, something about that flavor. I not like it. Then after that, I would go Snickers. Not not really my bottom. thing. There's too much the peanuts in there. It's not it's not my vibe. Yeah. Then I'll go. I'm gonna Reese's and and uh, Kit Kat are pretty much a, a dead heat for me. What? Yeah, I love a Kit Kat, but if you put the Reese's in the freezer, that might that, add, that might elevate Reese's it a little. Freezer, good call. That's yeah. huge. I want to you Reese's. It's got to go in the freezer. If it's not, I'm not eating it. Uh, Reese's <laughs> at the top. Then I would probably. Probably go with um, I'd probably go with Kit Kat or Butterfinger. I like I like Butterfingers, but like Spencer's Butterfingers. hatred for Butterfingers I feel like is rubbing off on me. It runs deep. It runs deep. It runs so deep that I like, Butterfinger does get stuck in your teeth. There is like a um an aftermath situation. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. So frozen Reese's, Kit Kat, Butterfinger, and then Snickers. I don't need to ever have that. I am surprised. I'm not a Snickers person. We did have a cat named Snickers, though, so that kind of. <laughs> well, you've know, you've known these guys for decades, or I don't know how long now, and so and and you're learning new things every day. Every day. I mean, yeah. I knew that they weren't crazy about Snickers, but deep hatred. I didn't know about that. Deep hatred. Yeah, I think Snickers is just kind of there. It's like you know, it's fine. Yeah, you know? you're, right. you're right. I don't hate Snickers yeah. like I do. Yeah. You'll eat it, but you're not. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. We'll do a DC one. Um, so you're going out, best place to like go out to the bars, you know, play, see a show, whatever. Mm -hmm. We got U Street, H Street, Adams Morgan, DuPont Circle. <laughs> U Street, H Street. Um, I oh, will man. say uh, H Street first because Max lives near H Street. I live like two and blocks from H Street. And it's okay. down here. Um, I would say, what was the other one? U Street, U Street, U Street. Adamo, and Adam. what was the other? What was the other? The and Dupont, and Dupont. Dupont um, Adams Morgan, U Street, H Street. Adams Morgan is fun. We played a lot of funky shows there, and they have good restaurants there. Um, U Street Music Hall is cool on U Street, and that's really all I know about U Street. And Dupont is a little bougie for me, so I don't really get down there that much, but. Um, we we did play some funky shows in Adams Morgan. Uh, the one bad memory I have from playing like a little like jazz club there was like uh, like we uh, got we got uh, a we got a beer in between like you know you play like an hour and then you would take a little break have a beer and the guy handed me a beer and I, I like took a sip. The whole bottle was caked in puke. Oh, cake. it was so gross. <laughs> was, I like somebody had like thrown up all over the case, I guess, and like he just handed me the bottle and I was like, uh, uh, uh. dude. What? We we no. have never gone back to that place, but um so wow. that just had to that just triggered a little memory. But um, I think that we all have the same on that, right? Like the no. same no, we don't. Okay. They don't they, Max they Max don't is Mr. It. DC. Yeah, I was gonna say we're yeah. we're, not, we're, yeah. we're on the they, same page. They live, maybe. they live in Falls Church, which is actually there's some really cool stuff out there too. But I I've been I've lived here now for four years in DC proper, but um U Street gay bars are fun. D, uh that's a good that's where Kiki shakers there's good there's good fun bars on u street if you're trying to go out admo i feel like we haven't been there in forever i think that's just like that's like more of like a college that's like a young young man's game but i also remember there was like biker guys in adams morgan they would have like those like nights when there'd be like 70 yeah. motorcycles parked there. yeah i i hear you i i'm not don't really get out there so you're neither a biker guy or a college kid so it's kind of like no, it's not that's not going to be good and then h street is h street you've got like some classic spots like um Copycat is like our favorite bar. So H Street's eclectic. H Street's eclectic because yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I used to live off of um uh um E Street, like eighth and E northeast. So I'd walk down 
Eight, 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 eight and yeah. E. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. It's so like right on the edge of Capitol Hill. Yeah, yeah. That's it's nice up there though. Yeah. Oh yeah. It is nice. It is nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So we'll do a uh, real quick one here. Real easy one. Country Taylor Swift, Cottagecore Taylor Swift, Pop Taylor Swift. I got to go Cottagecore. I really loved the... Um, the folky kind of warm... I got, I got into folklore and uh, Evermore. I probably spent more time listening to those than any of her other stuff. But then then I would probably go for the for the pop um, and then and then the country. Like the country the, at the end? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I have nothing against Taylor Swift at all. Yeah, don't want to upset the Swifties. At yeah, don't all, the Swifties. no. no um, I truly just have not dived in yet. I have not gotten into the Taylor Swift thing. And she's like a crazy businesswoman. Nothing against her singing or anything. I just literally have not pressed play on folklore or, or anything. And you've heard the tunes obviously on the yes, radio, but we yeah, just, yeah. I'm kind of the same way. Like I just haven't really dived in too deeply. So I'm not too strong, strong about it. Although I think like some of the productions on the pop stuff were like amazing. And I think that was sort of inspiring, like with, with like, um, maybe bad blood or what was the other song mm -hmm. off that? Blank bad space? blood like was Blake space and that kind of stuff. I know yeah. like, we were in a time too. And I feel like she was kind of, getting some good vibes and some good inspiration from them. So like the early pop stuff, the early pop stuff, I think was yeah. really, was really strong. And it was cool to see like someone that was so established in one like area to like, just ship like that and crush it. So that, that was, that was inspiring. And I'm, a, I'm kind of a sci-fi nerd. Like I'm kind of in this stuff. So maybe you don't opinion, but Star Trek or Star Wars. Ooh, okay. I would say that we love Spencer and I love Star Wars. He's been uh we've been revisiting some some movies recently and he's been doing like the whole Mandalorian thing as well. Yeah. I don't um, know if I'm a huge Star Wars. I did I did watch a little Mandalorian, that was cool. And we just watched uh San Solo. What was the name? Han Solo. <laughs> Han Solo. I said Han Solo. I think it said San Solo. Han Solo. Han we watched like Solo. Solo. One of the newer ones that was pretty good. Yeah, we watched uh, one of the newer ones. But, but I, you know, speaking of Kale from Brightest Young Things, I know he's like huge into Star Wars and he's he's sort of like brought me up to speed on on some of those movies. Okay. And Are you well also Spence and I went and saw William Shatner live at the um at the Kennedy Center because the guy, this guy that we worked with, this sweet really talented dude, Jarek Bischoff, Jarek, right? He did this, a lot of the string arrangements on our last album, but he, he did this whole, William Shatner came and did like a solo performance at the Kennedy Center where he like talked about going up to space. Cause he went up, he was like one of the guys. Right, who, right. And like, he's like 90 years old. And he said like, he was expecting it to be this beautiful thing. And it said it like scared the hell out of him and like <sighs> shook him to his core and like made him really think about like, mortality and, and death like it, he said it like messed him up and then our <laughs> friend like uh scored scored it so they had the national symphony orchestra playing like behind him and it was like this amazing performance and the guy was like unbelievable and so i feel like i feel like i want to go into star trek a little bit just to star kind of trek see. was very cool though I, I remember growing up my dad loved to watch that yeah i was my dad was star. that's where i got into it um you star, trek, more star, star trek, trek guy I'm a star. I'm more Star Trek. Yeah, I don't know hardly anything about Star Wars. Okay. I I do that. I will protest. I don't like how all the new Star Trek stuff is behind the paywall on Paramount Plus. Mm. I think it's silly. Like, you know, the first uh, the first series was on TV. The second series, you know, the Next Generation was on syndicated, and and people knew references. Even if you didn't watch Star Trek, you knew Captain Picard. You knew Data the Android. You knew. Um, beam me up scotty you know all these references and now with the that's what I'm from beam me up scotty that's funny i love that phrase mm -hmm. real all quick right. have you seen have you seen the um what's that show on uh on netflix with black mirror? black there's a black mirror episode where one of oh the yeah yeah the one with jesse plemons where yeah, um, yeah that was so I, good oh my was, god yeah that is they actually um talked about making a spin-off series about that. that chip after it like goes off oh wow 
Yeah. That was such a great episode. Yeah, because oh, yeah, they're both they closes and they're both just on the ship, right? And they're just kind of staring right, at like the ship, but they know that they're in, but the ship knows that they're like in like a simulation yeah. or something. Well, yeah. his his ship is like screwed. He's like locked in eternity forever. But right, right. But the ship, the, the people that escape. Yeah, they're like they're, we're just gonna go have fun and just. Yeah, yeah. So they 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 there was talk at some point of them doing a series about that. The, the ship that got freed or whatever. But, yeah, yeah, wow. Wow, this got really nerdy, deep sci-fi stuff. <laughs> we just lost oh, it. Oh, oh, wait, oh, oh, I know. I, I was thinking of the one with Jesse from uh, Breaking Bad. Did you see that? No, I, I didn't see that. I, I That's on the newer, that's on the newer, like where they had the one where there's like. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, that, that, was space, that was a space, that was another space film. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, that was a that, really good That one. was amazing. If you're, that, like, speaking of, yeah, like, Jordan, you gotta watch that one. Though. Dude, okay, that, I'll, I'll get on that. I'll get on that. Yeah, it was great. You gotta check that out. All right, well, I gotta go, guys. You guys gotta go. Uh, I love the, the painting you. and the, the the fan behind you. That's cool. Cool background. I always appreciate a good <laughs> zoom background. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the new singles out now, and, and there's no like, there's no due date or um, announced date for anything else, right? Later this year. Late later this year. Okay. Later so, this year. Doing the old keep an eye out. Follow yes. the social. Keep an eye out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Hi, Jordan. Thanks. Thank you okay. so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.